What's up guys, Jaime here, back at it again with a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna show with you how I plan to retire by the age of 30. Right now I am 21 and so I have nine years left to achieve this. And in this video, I'm gonna show with you three strategies that I'm gonna use and that you can also implement to make sure that you retire early in your life and you can enjoy financial freedom for the vast majority of your life and not only when you're 65 and uh, you've got 15 years left to live. So I'm super excited for this video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> Now, the first thing that I want to talk about before I even start uh, talking about the strategies is what I call the societal matrix. And what this is, is we've been led to think that it is completely normal to retire when you're 65 or 70 years old and then enjoy your retirement at the very end of your life. And by the way, when I talk about retirement, I'm not talking about completely not working and just, you know, laying on a beach for the rest of your existence. I'm talking about not having to work, but choosing to work and also dedicating your time to more passion projects and really thinking of bigger projects and your true mission on this earth because you've taken care of yourself, you've taken care of your family, you've taken care of the next generation of your family um, and so you've, you have the, the money sorted and now you can focus on your true impact without ever doing anything for money. And we've been led to believe that you graduate college, then you get a job and then you work, you know, 40, 50 years uh, until you retire to a point where even thinking of retiring at the age of 30 sounds laughable, right? Now, the way I want you guys to see it instead is that at the end of the day, money is value, right? And you get paid according to the value that you offer to the world. And so the way you want to look at things and the way you can accelerate your wealth creation and retire much earlier is by simply offering way more value in a shorter span of time, right? So let's just say that the typical person graduates from college, uh, gets a job, and they steadily offer 100 units of value until they retire, right? So they work at a company and their scope of work is kind of limited. What they can actually offer is pretty limited because they've been hired for one specific job and they don't have control of the whole system or the whole business, right? And so they don't really have control over the scale of their impact. And so let's just say that this person offers 100 units of value every single year until the age of 65. Now, what you could do instead is you can offer 500 units of value in let's just say 10 years. And so instead of working 50 years and offering 100 units of value, you work 10 years, but you offer 500 units of value. Now, the way you can do that, the only way you can do that is by building a business. And why? Because a business has scale. When you are an employee, your impact and your value is usually only for your uh, team, right? For your team in that company, and maybe for a bunch of different clients that you're working with. Now, when you have a business, your scale and your impact could be millions of people. And so essentially, you're gonna be able to provide way more value in a shorter period of time. That's really the way you wanna look at value and making money. The problem that I think most people have, however, is that they don't really even question the uh, assumption and the, the societal matrix that I'm talking about, right? They don't really question the assumption that you have to work 50 years offering 100 units of value because you are capped by uh, an entity or an organization. They're not even open to the possibility where they could actually start their own business and serve a lot more people and have a wider impact. And that actually brings me to the second point, which is the reason why most people don't retire uh, early is simply because they don't begin with the end in mind they don't actually have a plan in place to get there. And so they just work their whole life engineering towards retirement where they could actually reverse engineer and get clear on the numbers that they need to hit to be able to retire early. And that is what we're gonna be doing for the first point, which is gonna be defining our target based on numbers. The first concept that I want you to understand is the 4% rule. If you've never come across this rule, essentially it states that you can withdraw 4% of your investment portfolio to live comfortably in retirement. And the reason why that is, is because if you only uh, withdraw 4% of your investment portfolio, the returns that you will get from that investment will actually cover or exceed your withdrawal. So a pretty sweet scenario. So what we first need to get clear on is how much money do we have to have invested to be able to live comfortably. And so the first thing in that equation is determining what is a comfortable life for you. How much does your comfortable life really cost, right? And you wanna get clear on you know, what uh, type of house are you living in? Uh, what type of trips are you taking? Do you have a nice car? Do you have a watch collection? Whatever is your dream lifestyle, you wanna make sure you list it out. Because sure, you could live uh, very frugally in your retirement, but we're looking to have a, a dream lifestyle once we actually retire. So you wanna make sure you list it out. For me, it's around 150 to $200,000 uh, every single year in costs and expenses, uh, which is definitely pretty high. Uh, I know that a lot of people can live on way less than that, but that is my dream lifestyle. Uh, now for a lot of people, that might not actually be a lot of money, but what I can tell you is if you actually list out the things you want in life uh, as your dream lifestyle, you will probably realize that it's not as much as you might initially have thought, especially if you're not accounting for the 
material things which are not going to make you incredibly happy. And yes, it's important to have uh, certain material things, but if you're not looking to get the biggest yacht in the world or uh, a really nice jet, then 100, 200, 300K a year is probably going to suffice. Um, so that is the first thing that you want to do. And then you want to apply the 4% rule. In my case, I'm going to apply the 3% rule simply because you're playing even safer and I recommend you guys do so as well. But essentially, it's a pretty simple calculation. There's also a bunch of calculators online. But if I'm going to withdraw $150,000 every single year, then I will need 5 million invested according to the 3% rule. So that is the first thing that we want to do. We want to make sure that we define a target. We want to make sure we get clear on the numbers because sure, we could talk about how we're going to do things, right? But if you don't have a clear goal and you don't get clear on the numbers, then it's going to be much, much harder. So having done this, now we're going to talk about how I'm actually going to achieve this. Um, it might give you a few ideas as to what you could do uh, yourself, or you might do something completely different. But the whole idea is that we need wealth creators. And so right now I've got three cash flow positive businesses. Obviously, I've got a bunch of different uh, sources of income, but you know those I consider just streams of income. Um, but I would say that right now I've got three cash flow positive businesses. The first one, and by far the biggest one, is my social media marketing agency. And what we do is we take e-commerce brands and we transform them into market leaders by scaling them to seven and eight figures monthly revenue. The second business that I have is my coaching slash consulting slash mentorship businesses where I help other agency owners scale their agency to 10k a month in record breaking time profit. And my final business is the content creator at Personal Brand Side of Things where I basically partner up with massive brands like Shopify, Upwork, and Blue Social, Founder Magazine, and I tell their story online, especially through TikTok. So those are the three cash flow positive businesses that I currently have, and I'm looking to grow those businesses. Now, some, some of those businesses may merge together. For example, my personal brand is very linked to my mentorship, but also the uh, big brands that I work uh, with, for example, Shopify or uh, Blue Social or Headway app that actually overlaps with my agency a lot of times. And so they may overlap. I may start new businesses, but, but the whole idea is to grow those businesses that currently generate me $50,000 profit every single month. Next year, I'll be taking my social media marketing agency to 100K a month profit. So that is the first thing that I'm going to be doing. The next way that I'm going to get to 5 million invested uh, before uh, 30 is by taking the equity in some of the brands that we help grow. So for a lot of the e-commerce brands that we help grow, and the, one of the reasons why I love e-commerce is because you can take a performance-driven incentive. Why? Because your returns are very clear cut, right? So you're literally making the money and we love being a part and feeling a part of their growth online. The great thing as well is that we're compensated for it, right? So for a lot of our clients, we have a performance-driven incentive where if we make them 100K profit, we might make 5 to 10K profit for doing that every single month, right? Now, the next very interesting type of deal that I'm experimenting with more and more, right now, I only have one client that is under this type of deal, but we take equity in some of the brands that we help grow. And so if this brand was to sell for 100 million, then I would get a large chunk of that. And I'm much more involved in the decision-making, um, especially in the top management, right? So we're not just uh, responsible for e-commerce growth, but I'm responsible for decision-making when it comes to product development, when it comes to brand creatives, when it comes to hiring people. And I actually love that because it feels like I own a bunch of different brands. And so I, I'm really enrolled in these brands. But at the same time, I'm helping a lot more brands because the scope of work is not, you know, logistics and product development. And we're not doing everything ourselves. So we are limited uh, to that growth component. So I absolutely love that. Um, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, getting more uh, brands uh, and getting more partners in this type of agreement and equity deal. So that is the second strategy I'm going to be using. And the third strategy is investing. So I'm going to be investing into real estate, stocks, bonds. I'm also going to be investing into uh, exciting startups. I'm also going to be investing into crypto. I don't even want to say that word because uh, you watch below this video, I'll get a, a bunch of uh, scam artist uh, comments, uh, basically uh, recommending their their pal for uh, crypto investments. So if that's the case, be aware that uh, YouTube hasn't really cracked it. Uh, and so uh, if you see comments like that, never trust those comments. But essentially, that is the way that I'm going to generate the wealth to invest, uh, to have uh, 5 million invested by the age of 30. The fourth way is smashing the like button. Hope you're done with the algorithm, the whole channel, um, and I'd really, really appreciate it. So if you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and tap the like button. YouTube just finds it extremely sexy when that gray like button turns blue. So that is how I'm going to generate the income to have 5 million invested by the age of 30. And the final section of this video is what am I going to do once I retire? And um, I really want to cover this topic because when I say I'm going to retire, I don't just mean I'm going to go to the beach and you know just sail for, for the rest of my existence, like I said uh, at the start of the video. What I mean by that is, again, never having to work for money, never needing money ever again. And so only doing things that are passions to me. Now, don't get me wrong. All the things that I'm doing, I absolutely love them, right? 
But when you start a social media marketing agency, you don't necessarily have to be passionate about it, right? You're doing it because you understand that it's an, uh, it's an amazing financial uh, vehicle. You also understand that it's an incredible uh, business model uh, and that it's gonna generate a lot of wealth. Now, I've come to fall in love with the type of agency that, I've, that I'm building, right? And that's been through a lot of iteration. But what I'm trying to say is once you get to that point where your investments are taking care of you, uh, you are only gonna be doing things out of pure passion, right? And so my mission on this earth is to abolish the rat race. And so the way I'm doing this is number one, with my agency by empowering other business owners to grow to seven, eight figures, right? And we only partner up with brands that we truly, truly believe in and whose product we know has a positive impact. And so the more they grow, the bigger uh, team they can have. And so the more people that can work for them, the more people that are gonna be not in the rat race and working on something that they're truly passionate about. Okay. The second thing that I probably will continue doing, simply because it's just a passion project for me and seeing the impact is massive for me, is showing and teaching others how to generate income online and get to 10, 20, 50K a month, right? Because not only will that mean that they are not going down the rat race, but their success is going to inspire other people. So it's kind of like this uh, network effect, me understanding that I can influence you know, a billion people in the world, right? But what I can do is change thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives, who are also going to impact other people to not have to go down the rat race. And the third component is going to be the charity component. But a video for a whole nother time. So those are the three topics that you want to keep in mind to retire young. Uh, to recap, we've got making sure that you define your goals and you define your numbers so you know what you're shooting for, reverse engineer your journey. The second thing is get clear on what things are going to be your wealth creators. And the third thing is make sure you really know what you're going to be doing after retirement. Because if you're not chasing after a goal, uh, the human brain and the human body are the case. And so having a goal is incredibly important to stay chasing your full potential. So that is that for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the like button. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video, and I'll be sure to check those out. If you haven't checked out my free masterclass on how to sign and keep four-figure SMMA clients, don't know what you're doing, um, go ahead and check out the link in the description and you will be taken to it. It's honestly an incredible free training. I literally get DMs from people telling me they implemented the scripts, the strategies that I cover on that training and they're getting results. So uh, if you want to check it out, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.